right, guys, we are back and we are with a very, very special guest. We have one time national championship winner, two time world championship winner, Super Bowl hero in Super Bowl 15, Mr. Kenny King. How you doing? I'm good, Kenny King Jr. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing well. I was going to, I was going to lead with, you know, this is somebody I've known very, really close family, friend of the family for the past 37 years. And let's not talk about the two days that, that'll be 38, but, um, but no, just, you know, I, I wanted to talk to you, you know, obviously we talk every day and we talk about um, a lot about Raider football, a lot about stuff around the league, things like that. But I wanted to get your thoughts on coach Flores' induction and, and what that really means to the Raiders. And why did, why do you think it took so long? Wow. Whew. What does that mean to the Raiders? What does that mean to the fans? What does that mean to the National Football League? What does that mean to the past? What does that mean to the present? What does that mean to the future? You know, and Tom Flores, you know, I'd never heard of Tom Flores until 1980. And I got traded to Oakland by from the Houston Oilers. And I, I was all told at that point trade was made by uh mr davis so i don't know you know i don't know all the intricates of that but let me just say this the things that i have in the last 40 years uh seen and 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 have been ex you know have had an opportunity to be exposed to is you know uh, players coaches of, of this magnitude we've had We've had the Gene Upshaws, we've had the Art Shells, we've had the Dave Caspers, we've had the Mike Haynes. We, you know, we, we, you know, we, we've got those players, those yeah. people that are in the in the in the Hall of Fame. But you know what? Let's let's talk about Coach Flores. Let's call. Let's talk about Coach Flores. Coach Flores is a guy that was quiet. He didn't raise his voice a lot, but when you you knew when you were in trouble, you knew when you. Uh, uh, what he was talking about, and that's a kind of that's a kind of leadership that this that man brought to the Raider organization. I was fortunate enough to be uh, traded into that into that family, and to be here now, forty years later, saying that Tom Flores is now going into the National Football Hall of Fame is it's it's the right thing. Should have been done years ago. Uh, because of the fact that he not only did he play as a as you know in, in you know into uh, as a player, he was an assistant coach. He was as a as a Super World Championship. He he was a head coach of two head uh, of, of two Super Bowl championships. So you know what, Tom Flores has done so much for this game, for this and and for. The Hispanic American, you know, Hispanic American that live in America today, you know, he is a legend. He's, you know, I, you know, I. There's not enough accolades that you can throw out there just to say, "Hey, coach, you did a hell of a job." And you know what? It's about time you get there. And you know what? I plan to be there with you. You know, and and with coach, it's it's one of those things where not only did he did he play. Not only was he an assistant coach, not only was he a head coach, um, but you look at those Raiders teams that he coached. Uh, you look at the cast of characters that were on the team. So for him to manage, you know, guys like John Matuzak, guys like you, guys like Gene Upshaw, Art Shell, all those guys together, Cliff Branch, Rod Martin, you know, to, to, to manage that and to, to put that team together. I mean, that Super Bowl 15 team where you guys were the first wildcard team to win a world championship to walk me through that. How, how did he make that work? You know, I, 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 you know, we've had, a, there's been a lot of discussion. There's been a lot of conversations and, and I, you know, there's one, I, there's one that I wish that I had a taken a recorder with me. This was uh, it was back in like 1991. Uh, the Raiders was playing the Miami dolphins in the, uh, uh, Japan over in Japan, you know, in the preseason game, and Mr. Davis brought players from the '60s, '70s, '80s, and '90s. I mean, those eras, those decades. I mean, I got to sit with, you know, I'm sitting here with Jim Otto, I'm sitting here with Ben Davis, and I'm sitting here with 
you know, I'm sitting here with George Bland. I'm, you know, I, I'm sitting here with legends. Okay. And, and for, for, for that information, you know, we've had a lot of great uh, experiences, but I, one of the things I wish from that, from just from that event was that I had a recorder so that I could have brought in and, you know, and had those recordings of what we talked about. These are, these are off the field antics. These are, this is what, you know, this is what the Raiders organization is all about. And that, and, and that's, you know, one of the things that what Tom was a great about is Tom was, Tom was a great coach for what we needed at that time. Not any coach could just come in there and coach that team. It need he need, we needed someone like Tom Morris. Yeah. So it was good to have him. Yeah. And I mean, he's, you know, he's coming in right after, right after John Madden. So those are obviously still big, huge shoes to fill. And he did it seamlessly. Um, And, you know, arguably that trade uh, in in 1979 that sent you and and Pastorini to the, to Oakland and Jack Tatum and Kenny Stabler to Houston, it worked out well. It worked out well for the team. It worked out well for the Raiders. It worked out well for you. Um, What are, what are some, what are some anecdotal stories about Tom Flores that we may not have heard or that the fans may not know of? <laughs> uh, well, you know, son, I, the thing about the Raid organization <laughs> is that uh, what's said in the locker room stays in the locker room. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, uh, if, if you want to catch me on the other side of Morpheus, and when I'm not, you know, we, we can have that conversation, but, you know, no, I tell you what, Coach Flores, Coach Flores has been a great friend of mine. He's been a great mentor, been a great coach. I mean, this guy's, he's done everything that you could possibly ask for from, from, from a person. And you know what? Mr. Davis was not the easiest person to work for, but you know what? If he loved you, he, you know, if he, if he, if he, if he, if he respects you, he loves you. And, and that's, and that's just the way it was. And Coach Flores had, you know, he had his hands full. You know, you got you got Gene Upshaw, you got Art Shell, you got Raymond Chester, you got you got uh, Dave Casper, you got uh, you know the and these are hall these are hall of famers, a future hall of famers, so forth, et cetera. And we're not just talking about the other guys, the Mike Davis, the Lester Hayes, the, the Ken, Reggie Kinlaws, the the Bob Nelsons, and so forth. He knew he knew how to bring the best out of every player and get what we needed when we needed it. And that was the greatest that, you know, that was coach Flores greatest attribute to me. And, uh, you know, and, and uh, I went to a 75th birthday party in, in uh, Reno, Nevada. And, you know, we talked about, you know, him getting in the hall and I tell you what, we're there now. Yeah. We are there. We are there. We don't have to say what it should have been, I'm not going to sit here and say that, you know, that uh, um, Bill Cower and, and, and uh, coach from over here at Dallas, uh, Jimmy what's Johnson. his name? Uh, yeah, John, Jimmy Johnson. You know, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm happy for them and they deserve to be there, but not before Tom. Tom should have been there a long time ago. You know, and that's one of the things that we see with Raiders, right? We see players that maybe should have gotten in a lot earlier, um, not get in coaches that should have gotten earlier, not get in, um, or finally get in or get in, you know, after, after the death. Fact. Um, you know, we, we, you look at guys like, you know, and, and not a knock on, on, not a knock on Lynn Swan at all, but you look at a Lynn Swan and you look at a cliff branch and the postseason stats speak for themselves. And you have a cliff branch who blows Lynn Swan out of the water yet cliff is still not in the hall of fame. And I think that that's where Raider fans, we, we get frustrated, right? We, you know, and, and I know that members of the Raider nation and, and former players, they feel that same frustration. Why do you think it is that Raiders often get overlooked? I think it's because of the, I think it's because of the, the, the league, the national football league has, has always had this uh, somewhat of a vendetta against the Raider organization. You know, me coming to the Raiders in 1980, uh, I found I found out firsthand what it was like to be a part of that process and that thought process. Uh, the Raiders were not given the well. I, we we probably were, but we just didn't feel like we were. 
Um, but I, I, I will say this, you know, the league itself has had, we've had our issues with, you know, especially uh, Ro, uh, Pete Rosell. Yeah. You know, you know, we, we, it was, it was such a wonderful time in 1980 when we won Super Bowl 15, where Mr. Rosell had to come in and had to present the, the you know, the hall, the, the world championship trophy to Mr. Al Davis. Mm-hmm. That was that was thank you, Mr. D. Thank you, sir. We'll we'll take care from here. Now let him come and do it. But you know, I, I just think that I think that there's been that uh, that stigma for so long. And I'm I'm hoping that and I'm and I'm praying that we get we we can get past that because you know what? You know, we still got Jim Plunkett. You know, we got we got Lester Hayes. We got, you know, we got Cliff. And you know what? Cliff is no longer Cliff is no longer with us. And and you know, I, I, I would love to see, you know, be I would I would love to be at that inauguration just to hear what Cliff has to say to yeah. have a boy, you know. But it's just one of those things. I, I think that the league, I think that hopefully, hopefully we're turning that corner where it's not, you know what, all the things that have happened, all the transitions and then the thing you know the transactions that happened or didn't happen the way that the league wanted to happen or the Raiders didn't want you know what we can get past that and and move on and and be and 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 you know and not penalize coach force I mean now coach is in his 80s you know and you know why couldn't he have had that HOF you know status right. 20 years ago right and he, seriously it's 40 years it's 40 years since you know since like Super Bowl 15. And there's been plenty of time. So guess what? What? Tell me. You tell me what the heck is wrong. You know, and you're 100% spot on. I mean, you, you hit the nail on the head, especially with, you know, you know, Jimmy Johnson. Um, but we, you know, we look at it. Coach is in, uh, which is huge. It's huge. We got Coach and uh, Charles Woodson, a first ballot Hall of Famer going in this year. Uh, Raiders are getting into the Hall. And, you know, there's been some Raiders that have been on the ballot, some former players that have been there, um, you know, for a year or so. Richard Seymour was recently up for it. Um, but, you know, you talk about changing the changing directions and, and trying, trying to change that trajectory in the league. You know, we look at it. We have a new place in Vegas. There's a new brand new stadium. Uh, the team is looking to turn the corner. Obviously, the defense needs a little bit of work. But what are some things looking at this team that Raider fans can be excited for going into 2020? Mm, I think... I think we've always had a good offense. I think our offense has been solid. I think that, you know, a lot of folks, a lot of people talk about Derek Carr, Derek Carr, Derek Carr, Derek Carr, Derek Carr. You know what? Until you've got it, and until you've been in that game and, and you know, you suited up and, and played that game, shut up. You know, stop. I mean, seriously. I mean, seriously. Sit, don't sit there on social media and, and blast Derek Carr because we lost Derek Carr. You know, we lost yesterday. He's going to have bad days. He's going to have bad weeks. I mean, that's a part of the game, but you've got to live with that. I think that what we have to do, what we have to do right now is we have to strengthen up that defense. We've got a good offense. We have, we have talent. Waller, I mean, um, Ruggs, uh, you know, you know, and, and, and uh, um, the running game. I mean, we've got a solid running game. We've got probably the most expensive offensive line so I think that that's something we could probably venture into and say hey you know what uh it's time for you to move on and let me bring somebody else in here uh defensively I think we need we need a couple of we need we need leadership we need leadership yeah. there and that leadership starts with the defensive coordinator we haven't had a defensive coordinator since you know for our, I can't tell you since Charlie Summer you know and that yeah. was back in you know back in the 80s 90s uh, and, and uh, you know, and all you guys, all you coach the coordinators out there that, you know, that, that's offended, you know, I'm sorry, but, you know, that's how <laughs> I feel about it. You know, get over it. Um, here, you know, I, I, I really do think that we need, we need defense. Our defense needs to step up. Our defense needs to be able to tell us, just like Ted Hendricks and, and Rod Martin and Reggie Kinlaw, those guys used to tell us, we're playing San Diego, guys, keep us in the game. And we'll win this game because it's it's about who's going to have the ball last, and that was the way it was with the Oakland Raiders and, and the San Diego Chargers for many years, for many years. 
And I think that where we are today, we're talking about, you know, once a Raider, always a Raider. Let's get back with, you know, let's get back with that too. Let's get, let's get these guys back in here. Let's, let's start talking, having some dialogue with some of these younger players, you know, not just, not just the hall of fame guys, because you know what, there's a Reggie Kinlaw who's a badass man. I mean, yeah. he's, he, you know, that guy was 250, 260 pounds and played middle, no, play, plays nose guard in the National Football League. And I'm going to tell you something. If that he can't tell you something about the game, then you know what? Then he can't, then the, the game can't be told. Now, I think that we need to, we need to embrace all bodies and get everybody involved with this organization. We're in, we're in Las Vegas now. We are, are, we are recognized. We're no longer in Oakland. I, Oakland fans, I, you know, I, I sympathize with you. I was there. I've, you know, been there with you. I partied with you. I've lost with you, won with you. But things in life changes, and you know, Vegas and back to Oakland, and now, you know, Los Angeles, back to Oakland, and then you know, now in Las Vegas. I think that we need to focus. Our focus need to be on kicking ass and taking names. We don't care. We don't care about anything else. That's what we want to do. We want to walk into that stadium and we want them, we want to get that fear back. You know what? Where's the fear? Where's that, where's that intimidation? Where's that, that, you know, the Raider, Raider image? Where's that Raider macho? Where's that Raider, you know, you know, it's like, where is it? So in order to, you know, in order to win, you got to have that. And that's one of the things that see, that's one of the things that, the New England Patriots were so good at us because they had an offense. They didn't have great defense. They had they had a, they had a great offense. Tom Brady's gonna beat you, right. but their defense could but their defense could also beat you too. And I'm not saying that their defenses were were lagging, but they were they were the greatest. There's been other defenses that have been just as good as those defenses. In order to get back into that, we have to start thinking about when we play when we play the Kansas City Chiefs. We cannot, we've got to understand that we've got to play three players offensively. Patrick Mahomes, Tyreek Hill, and Kelsey. If we, if we, and that's one of the things that I loved about the way the Patriots, I mean, the way the Buccaneers played the other night, they played those guys, and guess what? 31 to 9 world champions. Now, how do we get back into that field? You know, I think we got a good defense coordinator. I think, you know, we're, the direction that we're going in, but now it's the players. We've got to get their mindset into that rate of mentality. Yeah, and, and, and I'm going to leave on this this question here because you talked about the rate of mentality, the Raider image. We, you know, we, we hear a lot about, you know, that Raider mystique. You as a former player, uh, you as somebody who's been around the organization for a long time, somebody who's spent a lot of time around Mr. Davis. Um, tell the fans just a little bit about what the Raider Mystique is. That Raider Mystique is 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 a unique quality about an organization. It it's it talks of, it's about winning. It's about it's about friendship. It's about leadership. It's about uh, brotherhood. It's about it's it's about winning, and you know, 1980, you know, we were we were fighting, we were doing well, and then we started playing. We had a couple of games where we, you know, we um, we lost, and we had a team meeting. And I and I talked to JT Brick the other day. We were talking talked about this on Monday. We had a team meeting, and that team meeting gave every player in that room an opportunity to speak. It didn't matter who you were. You could be, you can be a, a rookie that just got drafted and last rookie to last player to get drafted. Or you can be a player that's on injury reserve, whatever. It doesn't matter. You're in this meeting is your opportunity to talk about it. The raid organization needs to get back to playing football. We don't care. We don't care about a lot of things. But what we do care about is winning. And you know what? It's like Mr. Davis said, just win, baby. If you can't understand that concept, then you don't understand Raider 
ism. I think that pretty much hits the nail on the head right there. I think that you pretty much solidified what it means, what it is, and what we need to get to do. Kenny, Dad, <laughs> I really want to thank you for coming on. It was a pleasure. I know that the listeners are going to love it. Um, thank you again. You're welcome, son. Love you. Love you too. Bye.